Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Devon Tarot, and welcome to another Help Me Devon plugin review. And today, in this Help Me Devon plugin review, we'll be looking at Thermal, brought to you by Output. Probably, if not, my favorite distortion plugin that is out there uh, when it comes to everything. So, I don't want to waste any time. I want to show you what this thing can do, and then we'll deep dive and get a better understanding of the plugin in its totality. So, I'm going to try it on a synth, I'm going to try it on some drums, and I'm going to try this on a bass. Let me just show you a quick preset of what this thing does to a synth that I pretty much use for a lot of diff different things. Okay, without first. I lied to you, this is my favorite distortion plugin. I'm not gonna lie to you. Let's go through some more presets right quick. All of these sounds are being derived from this. So it works sick with synths. Of course, I'll deep dive into the plugin, but I just want to show you the capabilities of what it does. Let's move on over to some drums. Let's check this out. Let's close this off. Let's close this. Let's hit our solo here. One second. Let's make sure we're over here. Cool. Let's listen to this without. Let me let you hear what the drums sound without it first. So that's the drums. Now, let's open up the drum preset bank in the actual plugin, and then let's just go through them one by one. All of that being derived from this. Super cool sound. Um, and realize that there's a wet dry knob on this as well. So you can kind of say, I just want a little bit of that saturation or a little bit of that distortion. And you can decide how much of the effect you actually want into it. It's right here where it says dry wet. Let's check this out on a bass now. Let's take this off. Boom, boom. Let's go to a bass. Here we go. Let's go on over to our bass line, uh, which is right here. And let's just listen to our bass line for what it is. Cool, so that's our bass line. Now, let's hit the bass preset bank and let's just go through these basses. Whoa, that's tough. So as you can see, this thing is sick. It's my favorite distortion plugin. And the reason why it's one of my favorite distortion plugins is because it does it just right to me. 
as far as the content that gets added into your signal, as far as the way it distorts it, uh, just the way it sounds, it just has such a unique sound, and I'm in love with the GUI of this actual plugin. It's doing so many things, and you don't even realize you have so much capabilities with this thing. You wouldn't believe the amount of different things that you can actually do within the plugin itself. Let me show you a little bit of what's going on underneath the hood in the actual plugin. So, there's a little button right here, and I love that they did this because I feel like Output didn't want this to feel like a daunting plugin where it's like there's so many buttons and parameters as opposed to saying if you want that, press this button and you can see what's happening underneath the hood. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself. Whoa, that is a lot of things going on. I'm one of those people too that say... Uh, I, I like to have a lot of control, but at the same time, sometimes it can feel overwhelming. I want you to look at this and I want you to realize something. It's not much. It's labeled very well uh, and easy for you to understand if you just take your time. So long story short, this right here allows you to control the bands of or the bands of the frequency spectrum that you're actually uh, affecting within the sound. So you can see, if I wanna affect more of 1K to 20 hertz, I could just crank this. Or if I just say, listen, I really just wanna bother that low end, which is 100 hertz and below, and that's it. You'll also notice that it says stage one right here. What that's saying is, hey, stage one is all of these things. This right here is relevant to all of these parameters. If I click stage two, it's basically saying, okay, all of these parameters in here are relevant to this band that you have set. And then if I hit stage three, basically that's an overall, or you could choose how much you want on that, uh, depending on how you decide to actually uh, place it within a frequency spectrum. So let's look at stage one, for instance. All of this right here within stage one are effects. If I come right here to this drop down, or better yet, if I come right here to this drop down, you'll see all kinds of things that you could do. So you see soft clipping, you see multifold, you see all kinds of waveforms that you can use to affect the signal. If I click this on and then hit the drop down, here is a list of other effects that you can also use. So this is basically manipulating the frequency as far as the sine wave and what it's implementing on this side. And then right here, this is actually giving you a, a totally effect that you can use and to manipulate your sound. So as you can see, you see a bit reducer, a chorus, a compressor, a stereo delay. And remember, you can say, well, I want a compressor right here. And then on stage two, I wanna add, uh, I wanna affect the same frequency range. So I'll go to 100 right? Boom. And now I just want to add a, let's say, chorus to it as well. I'll just give you an example of basically what can ha be, uh, happen and what can be used. You can also move on over here to the width side and say, well, I want to increase the width of this particular frequency band, 100 hertz and below. And you can increase the side information or you can increase the overall width of it to sound bigger, which is super interesting that they did that where they gave you a width control, but they also gave you something you, you can increase just the side information. So you have a little bit of a mid side effect that you can have in this plugin as well, which is amazing to do if you're distorting an 808, for instance, and you decide, well, I want the high end of the 808 to to be more stereo and the low end to be more mono. I feel like they really put a lot of thought into this whole thing and this whole process. And I don't know why I don't hear more people talking about this plugin. It's my favorite distortion plugin. And there's so many things that you can do within it. So what I also noticed in here is the tone. And the tone is allowing you to basically shape the tone, whether you want it brighter, warmer, uh, darker, you can actually do that all within the plugin. And as you can see, there's modulators and stuff like that in here that I, you could get really, really crazy with this stuff. I'm doing, I wanted to just do more of a surfaced level uh, tutorial for you guys. I don't want to get too deep into the, all this stuff, but just wanted to give you a general idea of what is happening within the plugin. You'll also see the effects right here that you could add more of it and all kinds of things as far as the dry and wet seeing it here. And then let's just look at the original. Uh, when you look at the original, you see these macros here, which you could actually add uh, macros if you wanted to. Uh, these two particular for this particular preset is drive and motion. And then you'll notice that if I choose another preset, the macros change, fatten and slide each, uh, and slide. So 
Each preset even has their own macros that you can use to basically uh, affect this GUI. So as you can see right here, it says fat and, and slide EQ. So if you go more up this way, you're going more to the fat and, and look at these knobs over here. I want you to pay attention to these knobs as I move this. So as I'm moving it, you're seeing on that X, X, Y position kind of thing, uh, it changes and decides to increase it or not uh, based on where you place this center on the X, Y axis. So up here more is fatten, down here more is less fatten, to the left is less slide EQ frequency, and to the right is more slide frequency. So if I go to one of my favorite presets that I've created in here, you'll see that I can go, this way will give me more of that lo-fi effect, and this way will give me less of it, and up will give me more of that dreamy grit, and less of it will give me less of it. So you, if you don't want, or if you're one of those people, a producer or engineer, that really, uh, you're not trying to get too deep into the plugin as far as everything is concerned, which I highly recommend you do, you can stay very surface with it and use it to your advantage as far as just this GUI, saying I want more of that grittiness. Go up, uh, I want less of the slide frequency, go down. This is my favorite distortion plugin, and I really wanted to expose it. I'm not being paid for this at all. I've just really been a fan of this plugin, and I've always wanted to show you guys this plugin. Use it for your own music and tell me what you think. Get creative with some vocals or something like that in that regard. So this is my very surfaced uh, plugin review of Thermal by Output, one of my favorite distortion plugins. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also, you make, make sure you follow us at Help Me Devon on Instagram. And also make sure you comment below and let me what other plugins you want me to review and check out uh, and bring to the channel. Also, make sure you join our Discord community with a bunch of aspiring engineers like yourself. I hope that that was helpful. And until next time, you guys.